know, on that note, I, I, I did want to bring up, um, you know, what do you feel about teaching learners comparatively to perhaps what your notion of competitive swimming is? Is what do you find to be easier? You know, you made the point about technique. There does not need to be. I don't need a legal breaststroke kick to get across right. the pool. Right. You know. Um, but uh, what do you find that it might be easier? What do you find? Where do you find that some of the pitfalls come in? So the what an interesting question. So. So I don't know if it's ever easier teaching somebody something, sure. but it's certainly different. So um, the, for beginners, especially those who are really scared of the water, um, we usually have conversations before they come in just to see what's going on. Most beginners who are scared of the water have some kind of trauma in their past history or there's something carried through from family or from a community that... Um, that they've carried with them for years. And so when they're walking into the water um, or when they're even thinking about walking into the water, there's already this fear weight around them. And it makes it hard for them to see and it makes them hard for them to learn because they're just scared when they get started. So the goal for everything that we do in our group, and you know it because you've helped us with it, is to have comfort from day one, to not do anything that you're not comfortable with, to go slow, um, to take your time, to, to settle in and find, to start that relationship in a pleasant way with the water with as much distance as you need, slowly working your way in, right? Um, so, so that's a very different challenge, but, and it's a much more emotional side of a challenge than it is for teaching somebody who already knows how to swim, how to swim faster, where the technique piece is so important. So I, when I have uh, Cameron or one of the other coaches there who really have good skills, um, working with a group of advanced people, it's like if, those, if they call and they're out for a week or they're traveling or whatever and I have to pick up the advanced group, I can get by with the advanced group, but you wouldn't want me to be your coach if you were trying to get somewhere because sure. it's just not what I'm good at because I don't see those little things. I, I miss them along the way. Uh, I don't notice the change in your hand. I don't notice that, you know, three three steps back you miss something that made your hand come across to the cross your midline kind of deal. It's like I just see it cross the midline. I don't know how, why it got there. And the really good coaches are four or five steps back seeing the things that create the things down the road, right? But I can do that from a fear point of view for folks who come in and I can say, I see this. I see this, I see this, that's going to play out this way. If I, if I intervene here, then we can stop this from playing. We can begin to make it move. But it's, So it's a completely different set of skills. I'm going to use some of the basic techniques, but I'm going to do... So I'm a, a believer in successive approximation as a way to learn, right? So it's the way kids do it. They don't get it exactly right. You don't worry about making them do whatever it is you want just perfectly the very first time, they're going to get it. They're going to finally fine tune it. So if we can get the adults with the basic understanding of, you know, push down to go up and face in the water and getting comfortable with that and how to keep water out of your nose and uh, those very, very basic skills, if we can do those well, then it lets them move forward a little at a time. But those aren't even things that get considered in you know, in the competitive swimming space. So uh, it's, it's really, in fact, I think it's a trick. I think when we find competitive swimmers who are capable of backing up as far back as they need to go to start with somebody who's scared in the water, I think that's an unusual person because that stuff that is so muscle memory, it's just so much a part of their world that to back back up and to be able to see it and understand it, to me, is fascinating because they're so much further from a technique -y kind of point down the line. It's like to be able to back up and go that slow into that small a piece, I, I'm just amazed that when they pull it off. I'm amazed when people are comfortable with that. Right, I, and you know, I, I dealt with some of those same pitfalls of just, you know, understanding how to, it was a little bit of a, an adjustment coaching adults. And, oh, yeah. and you know, just being able oh, especially to- especially from kids. To understand that, yep, absolutely, and so, um, that was different, and, and 
just learning how to take a step back and and even for me in my formative years, I mean, going to a, a pool party with friends from high school, everybody knows how to swim. They can survive, you know what I mean? But that, to your point of push down to go up or push back to go forward, uh, a lot of people don't understand that, you know? And I think that it's so innate for swimmers, you know, we're used to playing like seals in the deep water and yeah. flips yeah. and bubble rings and this, that, and the other, you know, you yeah. just, you know where you are in space. Proprioception is such a big topic in swimming is just being able to know where you are in space, especially because you're on in another medium. Yep. We're not on land, yep. we're in the water. You're not rooted to anything. Um, you're just out in space. Yep. Thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, ring the bell, comment with any questions. If you're in the DFW area and you'd like more information on swim lessons or swim team, be sure to visit www.sigmaswim.org.